to pair. I feel like Brian Hastings probably has $20 in his bank account. I don't want to assume anything, but, you know. <laughs> and we move on for Raj Jaka now with a very strong ace nine of diamonds. Likes that. He will make a 210 to go. Around to Scott, who has picked up a pair of fours. Scott here going to make this call in position. He's on the cutoff. Now with Jeff on the button. He's got 5-4 suited, so he's going to come along. Enjoy your flop, boys. Well, I will. And Hastings with Queen Eight of Clubs also involved. So four-way action. Nice pot potentially brewing. And here is the flop. It's a 10-10 four. So Scott flopping a full house just like that. Wow. Faraz here with the lead knows this is a difficult board for his opponents to connect with, is gonna fire out. I don't mind this bet, but I would prefer it if he had a diamond on the flop to draw to. And Scott with his fours full just calling, and now the construction man, Jeff, with a piece of it, and he's mm. gonna stick around with the call. This is tricky here, Vince. Hastings gets out of the way. comes the turn card. It's a seven of clubs. So now there's four clubs out there for the construction man, Jeff, as that well. That is bad news for Jeff. He's got too much hand to get away now. But as we know, he is essentially drawing dead. A 10 would deliver a chop any other card, and he loses. There's the bet by Scott with his fours full. He's betting a hefty 1.35. Scott, hoping that one of his opponents has a 10 and will put a lot of money in. Instead, Jeff, with a pair and a flush draw, has a decision to make. Action clock. Tony is ticking down to four seconds, and yep, Jeff wants more time. He's got a four flush and a little piece of it with a bad kicker. Oh, boy. Faraz realizing the jig is up. Faraz is just a spectator now. I know he still has cards, yeah. but... He's not putting more money in this pot. Well, this is a big moment for the non-pro. Clock is ticking down again. Can he get away from this at this point? Oh, hey, what's more time again? Another concern I have about using two time bank chips here as Jeff is that you now eliminate the possibility of holding a 10. Okay. Because your opponents know you're going to make your decision That's faster right. than That's this true. if you have a 10. Oh, boy, he's making this call. Heavily invested. Jeff Fielder. Now, the thing you don't want to do is hit the flush to keep you around. <laughs> the irony is both so, these guys are oh rooting no. for a club, and there it is. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Jeff has hit his flush now. Fours filled for Scott. If we could peek behind Scott's sweater there, you'd see an ear-to-ear -ear smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scott. Also using a time bank ship. Throw him off the tracks. Yeah. All in. And there's the all in. And the construction man has fallen off the scaffold. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. So Jeff Fielder out in sixth place. The first person to get thrown into the swamp here at the Seminole Hard Rock. He will take home 144000 Great run from Jeff Fielder tonight, making his first final table. But he's going to have to come back once more if he wants to get a WPT title.